get this, a man in Florida, he wants to force public schools to not just pray at the beginning of every school day, he wants to force them to say a certain prayer that he has written out. And if you want to not say his prayer, he wants you to jump over a hurdle in order to get out of saying it. And your first thought here might be, that sounds unconstitutional. And he seems to think, oh, well, we can just put it in the Constitution then. So let me show you this email. This is written in June. And I know I'm saying Florida man because he, he is a Florida man. But check this out. Um, I'm submitting a final copy of my proposed initiated, propo initiated proposal. Be it enacted by the people of South Dakota. Let's just pause there for a second. This is a Florida man who is trying to propose a constitutional amendment in South Dakota, a state in which he does not live. And I will get back to why he's doing that in a second. But look at what it says. This is what he sent. Who did he send this to? He sent this to like the attorney general's office, initiated measure for non-denominational prayer in public schools. So look at this. Each school district shall require that every school day begin with each teacher grades kindergarten through 12, leading their students in the non-denominational prayer provided in this section. And then he even lists the prayer itself right here. Almighty God, who is aware of his creation, who keeps it going and judges it, please have mercy on us. And basically, if you have a religious objection to it, fine. But if you have a religious objection, he says, and you don't want to say it, you have to submit it in writing to the school principal. Like you have to do work in order to get out of saying it. So this is what Florida man is saying to the state of South Dakota. And the first thought might be, well, that dude just sounds like a crank. Why can't they just ignore his stupid email? Well, it turns out this is the process to get something on the ballot, like a constitutional amendment. And so... I want to be clear. He doesn't want to just make everyone pray. He wants to force them to do it. He wants them to use the words he's giving them. He wants every kid to acknowledge his God, beg for mercy, and then make it harder for people not to get away, not to do it. Every bit of that is illegal. You cannot force kids to say a prayer. You cannot force them to say your prayer, and you can't make them do homework just to get out of it. So why is he doing this in South Dakota? Well, reporters reached out to this guy. His name is Hillel. They reached out to him, like, why are you doing this in South Dakota? And this is what he said to the reporter. The rule says it only has to be submitted in one state, Hellinger said. If I were to admit it in Florida, I could do the exact same thing, but I would need more than 50 times as many people to sign the petition to get it on the ballot. So basically he's saying, eh, there's less people, fewer people in South Dakota. So maybe it's easier for me to do this. And then he says, I mean, South Dakota may be a very crime-free state, but most of the country is going through a lot of crime. First of all, that's not true. The, the crime rate is going down. But also he's saying South Dakota is fine, but, you know, we want to inject God somewhere, so why not? By children knowing there's a God in this world, it would have an influence on their behavior. No, it wouldn't. That's not how kids work. Or religion, for that matter. But basically, he's admitting it. He's saying... Ah, there's fewer people in South Dakota, so I don't need as many signatures. So maybe it's a little easier for me to get this on the ballot. He's openly admitting that. And the thing is, in South Dakota, when you submit a ballot proposal like this, the people who run the state are obligated to take it seriously. And what that means in practice is that the attorney general now has a job to do. The attorney general is legally obligated to explain to the public what the ballot measure says in fair and neutral language before the public gets to weigh in on it. After he says, here's what the proposal would say, then the public can chime in saying, well, this seems very not neutral, so you need to change the wording. They can do that. And then after he has a final draft, the attorney general submits it to another official. And if all that happens, it goes back to our friend Hillel here whose job it is to get signatures to get this on the ballot. And the attorney general this week responded and said a couple of things. He said, first of all, here's my version of what you just said. Second thing is you, you're going to need to get over 17,000 signatures 
if you want this on the 2026 ballot. Um, he didn't do much revising. He just said, uh, I'm going to show you what the attorney general said in his press release here. This is from August 20th. Again, this is like the attorney general for South Dakota. And it says this. J uh, Marty Jackley says this proposed initiated measure would require each public school teacher in grades kindergarten through 12 to lead students every morning in prayer. The measure would allow both teachers and students to seek an exemption from participating in the prayer. And then he actually released what he would tell the public. And I'm not going to read all this because honestly, it's not that different from the email I showed you earlier. Uh, it just puts it all in writing. But look at this last bit at the bottom. The measure may be challenged in court on constitutional grounds. Judicial or legislative clarification of the matter, measure may be necessary. Um, I don't have a lot of love for Republican attorneys general, but I will say Marty Jackley made it clear, like, don't shoot me. I'm not the, I'm just the messenger. I have no opinion about this measure whatsoever. It's not my job to tell you what to think about it, but he has an obligation to say, here's what the measure would say. Here's the prayer that this guy wants you to say. And also, yeah, this might be challenged in court. That's it. So the attorney general put it out there. And as I'm telling you this, they have until, what is it? August 30th for the public can weigh in until August 30th, not on the merits of any of this. They have until August 30th to say, we agree with the attorney general's characterization of what this measure would say. Um, and then eventually the final draft is going to be sent to the secretary of state by September 9th. And then it, if all of that happens, it goes back to Hillel, whose job it would be to collect 17,000 signatures in South Dakota. How is he going to do that? Is he going to fly to South Dakota and knock door to door? I don't know. I don't even know if he thinks it'll get that far. But this is what the plan is. And my favorite thing about this story is when he was asked, like, why are you doing this? Because it seems totally illegal. He told the reporter, no, it's fine. I talked to a lawyer friend of mine and the lawyer friend said it was it was in good shape. And then the reporter's like, which lawyer did you talk to who said this was all well and good? And oh, my God, you will not believe what his answer was. Let me show you. I emailed Alan Dershowitz regarding this issue. And he says that with the present Supreme Court, it's very likely they would overturn the 1962 ruling, which ended mandatory public prayer in schools and allow for non-denominational prayer in public schools. He emailed Alan Dershowitz, the guy who defended OJ and Jeffrey Epstein and I think Harvey Weinstein as well, and who's just one of those now Fox News conspiracy theories spewing lawyers. Alan Dershowitz says it's cool, so I'm going to try to make this happen. Just insane. I like this comment. Thought he would say Giuliani. Would that be that much worse? I don't think so. I don't think so. So... So this guy's doing it. So you can imagine, I went, I, I'm going to back up for a second. Dershowitz isn't totally wrong here, though, because I think the argument is everyone says this is illegal, what this guy's trying to do in South Dakota. <laughs> Let's say this measure got on the ballot. Let's say the voters of South Dakota approved it and someone would sue. And eventually it could go to the Supreme Court. And their hope is if we can get any church state separation lawyer uh, any church state separation issue in front of this Supreme Court, they're going to overturn it. They just need the case to do it. I don't know that this court, even this court, would go that far because usually it's only when they can distort a case, like the Coach Kennedy was praying at football fields after a game, when you can distort the facts to get the result you want, which is what conservatives did there, they'll do it. But when it's so blatantly illegal, forcing religion down kids' throats. I don't know that this court would go that far, though I don't want to give them credit. I don't want to give them the benefit of the doubt. They very well could. I don't want them to have the option of deciding that. We're better off without that. So then I went down a rabbit hole with this dude who's making this proposal. Like, who is this guy and why is he filing this weird 
uh, ballot measure. And I found a couple things that I was uh, not that surprised afterwards. Pharmacist who wouldn't sell condoms loses lawsuit. <laughs> this is from 2000. And basically, Hillel worked as a pharmacist. And he says, I some company, Eckerd Corporation, they refused to hire him because he said he wouldn't sell condoms, which is to say he won't do his job. And then the company said, well, then we don't want you to work for us. And then he sued them. And thankfully, he lost that case. But that's one of the things he's known for. And then this is another one from 2009. This is our friend Hillel here in the middle uh, of all the faces you see on your screen. Hillel decided to run for North Miami Beach Council. He wanted to run for public office, but then he never showed up to any of the forums leading up to the elections because it was the Sabbath, so he couldn't leave his house. And then he didn't win that race, I don't think. And then a couple of years later, he ran for the same position again, and he did show up to a candidate forum, and someone asked him, uh, what are you going to do to help kids with technology access? And look at his answer here. Hillel said that all 10 of his children go to private schools and has no clue what's going on in the public school system. And yet, this guy who knows nothing about public schools thinks he has the right to tell public schools in another state how they ought to waste their time every day by acknowledging his God. I don't, I don't know if he thinks he's going to get to the point where he can get signatures. I don't know how he would collect signatures. But honestly, if you live in South Dakota and this guy knocks on your door, or someone working for him knocks on the door, just turn your back on them because this is a horrible idea that will lead to nothing good whatsoever.